Hi. Today on the bench, we have something that's unusual that you don't get to see very often. This is a Music & Sound Model N80. The N80 is a stereo music intercom system. It was the absolute top of the line model, came out sometime in the mid 1980s, I think it was around 84 or 85, and it was in production until about 1993 or maybe 4. You don't see a lot of N80s because they were very, very expensive at the time. Just this master station by itself, without the wall housing or anything else, this list price on it was nearly $1,000. So that was a lot of money for a music intercom master station in the 80s. And since it's an 80s model, we have it in its glorious black and gold. Black and gold was very popular in the 1980s. Perhaps some of you remember, people would go down and you would buy a Lexus or you would buy a Cadillac or something. And then you would buy gold emblems and things to put on it because that was super jazzy. These were also very popular because they have a lot of buttons and the buttons are all gold and people like gold buttons. The N80 shares its basic design with the next model down, which is the N440. And the way you can easily tell the difference, because Music & Sound likes to hide their model numbers, if I'm not mistaken, it'll be on a label usually down here in the corner. Uh, this one doesn't seem to have it, not sure why. But if you're looking for your Music & Sound model number, look on the lower right-hand corner edge of the faceplate. Usually there's a sticker. Not on this one at all, I don't think. Anyway, the way you can tell the difference between an N440 and an N80 is an N80 has two, four, six controls along the bottom, very much like the N440, which would have four controls. You have intercom level, volume level, system volume level, that's the music, bass, treble, but since it's a stereo system, you have both left and right speaker controls. Now the N80 does not have a speaker or speakers built into it. In an N440, the speaker would be here behind this part of the faceplate grill. In an N80, since we have dual amplifiers, you need the space behind this part of the grill to put the extra amplifier, the bigger power supply, and all those sort of things. So in an N80, you would have a dedicated pair of speakers. They wouldn't be intercom stations necessarily. They are music only speakers. And these two I have hooked up just as examples. They would hook up to the terminal board back here where it's a little hard to see. And there are dedicated connections for a master speaker N80 only left and right. And that's what these are connected to. These would be controlled with the balance controls here. So it's a very nice design. These also had some advanced features for back in the day, which were very appealing, but today sometimes can be a problem. An N80 is a seven wire system. An N440 is a six wire system, but you need the seventh wire on the stereo model because you have to drive an extra speaker in each location. Now this is the type of design that it does, it is a common ground. So as an example, on these speakers, I made up wire cables of green and blue. In each case, the green is the ground and they're connected to a common terminal on the terminal board back here for the common connection. So it's a common ground design. So you have a common ground for right and right channel and a common ground and left channel. Since it's a seven wire system, it has full intercom capabilities at every location. You have door, talk, and listen. You also have room, talk, and listen. So it only requires one person to operate the system when it comes to our communications. If you want to call to someone in another room, you would push talk down and call to them, and then you can push listen down and hear their reply. They don't have to go right to the station. They don't have to operate the controls. It all is controlled by the person who initiates the call. Up here we have our room control switches. There are 12. Now an N80 has two 25 watt amplifiers built into it and it is designed to handle up to 20 speakers. And that would be 10 pairs. These switches control how each set of speakers will operate. If the switch is in the uppermost position, that room is intercom only, no radio. If you move it down one, it's radio and intercom. 
Off is the third position and off is off. It's no radio, no intercom, and no door chime. And then the last position is monitor. Monitor works like a baby monitor. So if this was in the baby's room and you put the baby's room on monitor, baby wakes up and cries, you hear it come out through all the other speakers throughout the house. Monitor doesn't get used all that often, but it is a handy thing to have sometimes. The other advanced feature for this was this control panel here. Most music intercom systems that have digital radios, they have some sort of tuning buttons along the lines of manual up, manual down, some kind of maybe scan or seek feature where you push the button and it scans ahead and finds a station and then pauses and then scans ahead and finds another station again. But you have to go through, even if you do it manually, if you're on 88.9 and you wanna to listen to 106.5, you've gotta hold the up button all the way until it gets close to that station and then tune it in. N440s and N80s have what was called direct access tuning. And you have to remember, this was designed in the 80s. We're all used to this kind of stuff nowadays, but this was an advanced feature for its day. For instance, if you wanted to listen to 106.5, you could actually do it two different ways. You could use the up or down buttons and you could move the scale up and the digital readout will show the numbers or you can go down or you can put in the station number directly. You can press 1065 and then FM and it will tune to that station. It bypasses all the up and down the tuning scales so that's a direct access tuning. It was a very advanced feature for its day. All of this is controlled on a circuit board that's behind this part of the panel and Music and Sound refers to that board as the computer board. The heart of the computer board is a microprocessor and the microprocessor contains firmware or code that programs the microprocessor to allow the functions of these buttons to work. That was all very advanced in the early and mid 80s. The problem today is those types of early microprocessors are very sensitive to the type of electricity and voltages that they receive. So when it's all brand new and everything in the set is perfect, it's not a problem. But as they get older and older and problems begin to develop, it can sort of take its toll on the computer or the microprocessor. Unfortunately, sets like the N440 and the N80, if they have a damaged computer board, there's no way to fix it. Unless you have another board that you can steal from another set which is the only real solution. The microprocessor itself could in theory be replaced on the board, but it has to be programmed with the program that makes it work in an N440 or an N80. And there is no way to do that. I'm sure somewhere in the annals of music and sound in their vast probably computer system and their archives or whatever, there is code that was written that could be programmed into the microprocessor, but they're not sharing. So that's not really a possibility. So that's sort of an overview of the N80. Now this particular N80 was sent to me by Brenda. Brenda lives in New Jersey. And this set was installed when the house was built in 1990. And it's a fairly large system. They have a wide range of inside wall mounted remote speakers and then a whole bunch of ceiling speakers with wall controls. So it's a nicely designed system. I actually, prior to starting my business, I actually worked for a company for a short amount of time who did music and sound installations. Not very many and not always very well, but they did. And I actually sold a system like this to a fella who wasn't too far from where their shop was located. And he was building a big, what he called Philadelphia style colonial home. And it was big for its day. This is back in the, uh, it's probably around 86 or so. And it was a really big house with the really big columns on the front porch and all that kind of stuff. And he was Mr. Bucks Up. He had more money than you could imagine and he wasn't afraid to spend it. We sold him or I sold him an N80 system that had full on maximum capacity 
everything in that house. And at that time, they also made big in-wall flush mounted. They were either three-way or four-way speakers. They were like two feet wide and three and a half feet tall. They were great big things. There were actually three pairs of those in that house. It was amazing. It was a really big system. The owner of the company was very happy with me. Anyway, back to Brenda's unit. This was installed in 1990, which makes it 32 years old. And in 32 years, it has accumulated about 280,000 hours of time on it. And as you may have noticed at this point, the display is blank and it's turned off. Now we're going to turn it on and you can see why it's been turned off. All we have is a loud buzz. And we have a loud buzz out of this one. And we have a slightly louder buzz out of that one. And you can see the clock is flashing. And it may be that we could actually turn it on. Um, it doesn't seem very happy. We're going to turn it off now. This set suffers the same problem that most earlier sets suffer from. It is now officially old and tired. Components in primarily the power supply and possibly the amplifier have failed and that's where the loud buzzing comes from. So let's go ahead and move some of this out of the way briefly. I'm going to lay this down, get it out of the way. Try not to knock over everything on the workbench and we'll disconnect the antenna I had connected to it. And the nice part about the design of an N80 is this. This is the terminal board for an N80. And here you can see my blue and green wires that I connected up to my two bench speakers. And you can see blue wire on left, blue wire on right, and the two green wires on the common terminal. And as it says here, master speaker N80 only, left, right, and common. So these are the dedicated connections for speakers that get connected directly to the master. Then you have all of these screws and all of these binding posts here. The color coding on Music and Sound 7 wire cable is you have yellow wires, blue wires, black wires, red wires, green wires. I believe these are without any markings. It says white common, so those are white wires. And then the right channel on an N80 are all of the violet or purple wires. So that's the color coding. The nice thing about this type of design is, get that out of the way, there are these multi-wired cables that come off the back of the N80 master station and they have these big giant plugs on the ends of them. And if we unplug this, like here's the blue plug and surprisingly enough, it plugs into the blue socket. What a, what a thought. So it just plugs in like that. So you've got a blue connector, you've got a green connector, you've got a white one down here on the bottom, you've got a red one here, and then you've got a little bitty white one here, it's only got four wires. And the nice thing about this is, if you need to remove one of these, all you've got to do is open it up off the wall and unplug the one, two, three, four, five cables, and it comes out of the wall. There isn't anything connected to this. Oh, you have to unplug the transformer also, which that's not a big deal. That'll be obvious because that's the only thing left tying it to the wall. Once you've unplugged everything, it comes out of the wall. So it's very, very simple. I have this set up here. It's late in the day today and I don't have time to do any more than make this video. But tomorrow, first thing in the morning, Brenda's N80 is going to get fixed. And after I get it fixed, there'll be a part two to this. And you can see how it works and what it sounds like kind of. We'll see what happens with our direct access tuning and our computer board. Hopefully it still works and it hasn't died. If it did, I think I've got one I could substitute in, but I think we'll be okay. This started to have problems, I think she said a few years ago, and because it had the loud annoying buzzing sound, she did exactly the right thing, which was she opened it up and she unplugged it from the transformer to shut it off completely. So it's been shut off for a few years. Anyway, tomorrow's project, first thing, let's get Brenda's intercom fixed. Hope you found this interesting and perhaps for someone it will be helpful. If it is, 
give it a thumbs up on YouTube because that helps us a whole bunch. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell, and when you click on the bell, click on it to receive all notifications. And every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.